Welcome back to the watch list. It's time to discuss the current landscape of the housing market as we continue to get more and more details. There's high hopes for rates to come down. Things are still pretty lofty when it comes to price. We saw some improvement in multi homes, which were sort of out of favor of late, but are back. Single homes dropped a little bit. Brad Hunter's with us, president, Hunter Housing Economics. Aaron Sykes, chief economist at Nest Seekers International. So we got our housing starts and permits that were released this morning. Um, Aaron, what did you make of it and how do you feel about the housing market going forward in the next few months? So we have been continued to be buoyed by the multifamily housing starts. Uh, we've seen those starts up about 22 percent. We saw single family starts pull back a few percent. Now, my overall picture, however, is that we are totally missing the mark in terms of our alignment of how we're focusing on building. We all know that there is a housing shortage in the United States. However, we're trying to fast track this fix through more multifamily, but the consumer continues to tell us that they want single family homes. So we did see a pullback of about 11% in terms of the new homes purchased last month. However, this is temporary and I do feel that tide starting to shift. We have a lot of positive momentum. We do <laughs> feel that cut coming on likely right before the presidential election. And I think that in markets, like mine in Florida, we are going to see the momentum continue to increase through the end of the year. And as far you mentioned, the new homes that are made by the home builders, where they have some leeway with uh, mortgages for folks that has helped with those sales overall. Brad, what, what's your takeaway these days? Sure. So we've had this big increase in mortgage rates and the builders have so far been shielded by the negative effects of higher mortgage rates to some degree by two things. One, mortgage rate buy downs, which they're in a position to do and they're doing uh, all over the place. And secondly, uh, low inventory on the resale market. That's shielded them from some of those effects. But inventory has been rising for the past several months, which we expected. And they're rising despite this so-called lock-in effect where people don't wanna move and lose their three and a half percent mortgage and get a 7% mortgage because eventually personal pressures start to mount. Death, divorce, illness, additions to the family, downsizing, moving for a job, moving for a nicer house or a more suitable location. Those things all are now, uh, over time, pressing more people to go ahead and list their home for sale, that's increasing the inventories, and that's uh, adding a little bit more pressure for the builders. So the builders now have uh, a 9.3 months of supply of inventory of new homes, which is very high, and that reflects the uh, somewhat of the weakness that we're seeing in sales. Yeah. Yeah, I know you're all watching mortgage rates. Thank you for that, Brad. Um, you know, I have a friend who actually refinanced last week or locked in a mortgage last week and asked me about the rates. And I said, look, you know, I think people are betting on them trying to go down a bit, but they're still going to remain lofty from what I understand. Erin, what do you expect for mortgage rates? Don't hold your breath to see three or four percent mortgage rates. Hopefully we are done with that forever. It actually set us up for the hardship that we're going through now. So a little um, glimpse of, of hope is that we are going to see lower rates. However, they're gonna be maybe a point lower point and a half lower max for an extended period, in my opinion. I think that we're going to settle right around 6%, 6.5%. 6 and frankly, that is a healthy rate for a 30-year loan. Both sides of the equation come off in a strong position then. Neither side is winning. However, we are not about winning. We're about a balanced market. Affordability, where do we stand on that, Brad? I. I Echo Aaron's comment about the interest rates. I, I don't see long-term interest rates or mortgage rates falling sharply anytime soon. And that's because of the massive federal budget deficit that I don't see anything resolving anytime soon. So um, the treasury issuance uh, is going to be massive and, and that's going to keep interest rates from falling uh, very substantially at the long end. Um, now, one thing I will say is positive for demand is you look at household formation rates, 
Generation Z, they're in their 20s, are more ready to move out of their parents' house or out of a roommate situation than the millennials. Uh, so headship rates have risen sharply. That's added to demand. And also, in addition to that, there's a, a decline going on in the number of persons per household. So in 1950, you had 3.8 people per house. 2017, you had 2.5. Now it's heading to 2.0 by 2030. Um, so you could build, uh, you need twice as many houses per person as you did back then, even if population doesn't change. Population is, of course, rising. So if you take the household formations of 1.5 million a year, you add 250,000 a year for replacement demand, another 400 to 500,000 a year for second home demand, you end up with total demand of 2.15 million a year versus our production rate of 1.3 million a year. So there's that gap between supply and demand that is in favor of the builders. I think the builders are gonna be able to, yeah. uh, in the long run, okay. enjoy uh, strong demand. Right, and as a result, it's still pretty lofty. The prices are still relatively high. Brad Hunter, Aaron Sykes. Brad Hunter, Hunter Housing Economics. Aaron Sykes of Nest Seekers International. Thank you both very much. Great to see you.